<laughs> Hello and welcome to the Plot Chat Overwatch episode 117. Yes, I have the trolling stick and the hosting seat at the same time. <laughs> and now it's time for me to project my dissatisfaction with the Overwatch scene and Overwatch League onto my friends through this podcast with this episode, <laughs> this very special episode of oh, Plot Chat Overwatch good. episode 117. Oh, um, Matt isn't here to, to be Matt's the not here to rein it in with the positivity and the PR speak. You know, he's been whipped into shape by the corporate structure, he's not here. He cannot contain us any longer. Our power is free. And so we begin with the introduction of the show. Actually, we don't want to get into the topics yet because Josh, you had, you had something really important. You said to me before the show, you had something really important you needed to say on the show. Yeah, no, I, I did. I wanted to start with a, I mean, the news has just been, the news has been so dry. We've got a few actually mm -hmm. pretty interesting uh, signings to be talking about and stuff. But the, the, the highlight of the week was that experimental tournament that didn't even get broadcast. <laughs> so so right, the off season worry. is only, <laughs> the off season <laughs> is only a third in, but it's, um, but it's not, you know, it's, actually, uh, it's actually, not slowing down. One more thing. Speed. There was one more thing. They had that um that college tournament, you know, with like the the college teams or whatever. Mm. And um, someone got really mad. I read that post. Someone got really mad. They were like, "This is the biggest upset in Overwatch history. Redbirds got beaten in the finals." And then like the first comment on Reddit is like, "Yeah, they didn't even have the same players that like they were." Also, I mean, like year. so <laughs> they were. It's like, yeah, we beat shock with Valiant like, players. It doesn't matter. Players, right? but, that was the team with yeah. Hydron and OG and Ultra. Like, isn't that the team? Is like it had a bunch of like the Angry Titans players that were playing for Redbirds, and then yes. all of them are like signed to Overwatch League now. So they haven't been yeah. screaming like for months, <laughs> essentially. So, uh, so my, <laughs> my my point being, my point being that you know I was looking for some stuff to spice up the beginning of the show at the start of this. I was assuming that I was going to be hosting as well, and I spotted in my DMs. You know, sometimes I get just the most fantastic DMs on Twitter. And I got this guy called uh, Thomas Schlausner. I'm, I, I might be mispronouncing that surname. Yep. But he, he messaged me and he said, hey, my name's Thomas. I'm a big fan of some of the articles that you've written for the Overwatch League. And immediately I'm like, okay, that's a really weird and unusual introduction. Because if you know enough to read the articles on the Overwatch League, surely you'd know enough to know that I've been a a desk analyst and a commentator, <laughs> and wouldn't you prefer that? You prefer my written work for the Overwatch League? <laughs> That's the thing that you really hook into. So I was like, all right, okay, let's see where this goes. And he said, recently, I've got into a heated deb debate sorry, with friends as to the definition of a C9. Now, part of the reason that he might have even found my name is that I wrote an article for the Overwatch League about what defines a C9 way back in the day, you know, when they were, when they were paying money for uh, content to be made. And so... <laughs> <laughs> and so and so he said i would really appreciate your two cents on a short clip from one of our recent games so he what he sent us a clip on plat chat and he wants us to evaluate it to see whether it's a c9 mm. presumably to roast his friends or something like that so i gave kurt the clip and i just want your opinion because i feel like it's better for a panel of jurors and judges sure. to really decide <laughs> such an important weighty decision so if Kurt could bring it up, I, I just want your input Before on whether it I does bring this count. Up, get ready because this is a GIF. It's, it's a not a video. <laughs> I can't pause it or anything. No, so keep your eyes peeled because I'm not going to be able to pause it. At any no point. I, the, I didn't get context. Okay, I'll tell you the context so you can interpret it quickly. He's in overtime, right? The attacking okay. team is in overtime. Is it a C9? You got sent a GIF. <laughs> I got sent a gif. I get sent weird stuff in my DMs. I just thought this would be fun to share. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. So he's on the attacking team, and the attacking team is trying is an OT trying to touch. Oh yeah, that's, that's a C9. I mean, that's a C9. I mean, that's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a C9. That's What's the counter argument? A C9. Well, no I, 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 I guess the counter argument might be that they were going to lose the fight anyway. But when I watch that, they're in a three v four. We have spawn advantage. They just used their no. Arissa alt. And they could have easily touched and won that fight, right? right they just killed the Anna as well. Alive. They had both tanks alive, full yep. HP, with a shield up, with this, the Mongo out. Like This person has to be the Orisa. There's no other way. Yeah, the, the Orisa actually has thrown this. I this hate to say it. You're it's saying, a of epic but, proportions. So you're saying you think the Orisa got in touch with us to try and defend their yes. non-C9 opinion? Uh, well... Or it could just be a friend, like, trying to make the Orisa understand how, how, how much they fucked up. 
or it could yeah. be or it could be someone on the defending team that's just like wow you guys c9 and they're like no no you guys forced us off and he's like okay i'm gonna ask the experts now to see if you guys are we up are we, now, are we missing anything is there any kind of forcing ability of any kind i mean there's a diva self-destruct but that's from the attack no, no, no. Like, they had like what four keep five playing the clip alive, here. and two of them were look, tanks arissa there was four there were four people alive look at this i mean how arissa how lays down a fresh off? shield and is stood behind the entirety they, of their they team got, they've got a fresh shield they have the super supercharger down. they have a self they could have just uh, hugged the back of the payload use. And they would have been fine. I'm assuming they got Fortify. Like, this clip is, what, like, five seconds long? They probably got Fortify off cooldown. Fortify, but they probably have Fortify, too. No yeah. They just killed the main healer on the other team as well. Yeah, yeah they, 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 this is absolutely a Cloud9. This is a, this is a C9 if I've ever seen one. There's lock so it many in. clouds in the fucking sky. All right. Well, lock it in. That's what lock the host says. So. Good. Have we got there the special go. graphic we cooked up where it says C9 <laughs> and it comes in? Oh, to actually have a new segment. Send us clips to determine if it's a C9 round. We're going to call it a C9 round table. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, might be a good segment. It's the off know. season, dude. Yeah, hashtag, that actually might be a good segment. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. hashtag plat chat clips. We'll go through it. We'll go through your clips every week. Oh, we yeah. we have to sure fill the off season with something. <laughs> yep. I think yes, legitimately yes. checking if clips are C9s could be actual. Yeah, I think that could be quite fun. There's a lot of debate around what makes a C9 a C9 sometimes. So Yeah, yeah. Th yeah. Thank you, person who messaged Sideshow, coming up with yeah, a new segment. Yeah, Th thank you, Thomas, for giving us inspiration on Thomas. a new segment that we're going to You definitely C9, well. though. 100%. There was no well, debate. that might not have been Thomas. <laughs> or, or your friend. Thomas, whoever's in that clip C9. Whoever, whoever it was. I don't know I don't know whoever it was, but they fucking C9. They fucked up. They fucked up real bad. So. Uh. Uh, this this episode is also, is also sponsored by Manscaped, too. That that might be the important thing that Gwen was trying to get me to talk about, but I thought it was funny to bring up this C9 clip, honestly. Yeah. But yeah, this, this episode's brought, uh, brought to you in partnership with Manscaped. Um, I'm now going to read you the Manscaped thing that I've been told to read, and I want to put that disclaimer in front of it. Hey, fellas. This episode of Plat Chat Overwatch is brought to you by our favorite producers of ball trimmers, Manscaped. The global leaders in below-the-waist grooming are leaving 2021 with new product. Clean yourself into the new year with their ultra-premium body wash. Also, special offer alert, use the code PLATCHAT for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Four million men already trust Manscaped. Time to join them. Now, I don't want to gas ourselves up, but one of the previous times that I was doing this read, it said two million men trust Manscaped. Double. And now it's four million. And I'd like to thank Plat Chat for that because I think we've done a pretty good job. <laughs> and, and, and listen, if there's time before the, the holidays or, you know, if you want to get a late Christmas present, then, hey, go and go and grab one. Go, they actually do make phenomenal uh, gifts. And I've, yeah. I've, just, I've just shaved my head and I shaved the rest of my body at the same time, and I can tell you, at the same, I am. Um, okay. Well, yeah, not not yeah. one in each hand. That'd be a bit different. And also with it? different shavers. Yeah, probably. different, different. Exactly. Different yeah. Different okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's I wanted to make clear. Key. Okay, we're good. Good. That mm -hmm. is the key. Um, also, it says, "What was the highlight of 2021 for you, and what are you looking forward to in 2022?" I'm looking so forward to question... shaving my balls in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? Well, mm -hmm. that's important because 2022 is on its way. And the last thing you want is to be the guy with pubes getting in the way of making this your best yet. 2021 sucked. And that's why Manscaped's making a splash and up in your grooming game. Their signature lawnmower 4.0, which is what I use. It's actually the best product on the market, even though <laughs> I feel I sound like I'm taking the piss, but it really is. A, it really is a good product. <laughs> it's no, here to take down every pube in its mind. path. All right, so you can get 20% off of free shipping with code PLATCHAT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using code PLATCHAT. Happy New Year um, to your balls. All I'm on good final plug. Start out with, Shout out to I'm Channel 5 this. on YouTube. Good show, good uh, YouTube channel. They this make is good, not even our YouTube not, channel. Not good, <laughs> good, document, good, good documentary content. Every, they have millions of views already. They don't good, even need good advertisement. Good they got like a thingy on the, on the back. <laughs> it's, it's a good, good not getting paid for this. What, what, is, what are you hoping to jump ship over there to Channel Five? After yeah, this? basically. Yeah, this is my, it's my CV. I'm gonna send them this video as an example of how good yeah. I am on camera. Mm, get ghosted. Yes, the not talking into the mic, pivoting 180 degrees. From the <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get started with the show, shall we? The first topic that we want to go over 
It's a very important one. We have a lot to discuss about this, a lot of information about all of this. No speculation whatsoever about the content creators receiving the Hopium Booster. So not only should you all be getting your COVID booster shots around this time of year, if available, um, if you haven't got one already, but also the Hopium Booster shot, which comes from the content creators <laughs> getting told all this information about this future thing that nobody knows. We don't know if it's an update. We don't know what it is, news relating, pertaining to, to what, but it's got a bunch of the content creators um, literally tweeting like Blizzard has just gave them 5% shares in the company. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually kind of on point. Yeah. If you read everywhere, all the content creators are like, oh my god, 2022 is going to be sick. And I'm sitting here like, I mean, it has to be so frustrating to stream Overwatch like literally every day for like years on end. Because like it's, there's only so many Overwatch games you can play, yep. right? Before like you lose your mind, especially ranked. And something, they've been told something that have just like put them on cloud nine. Like absolutely, they're, they're they're so happy, and I'm like, what could they possibly have been told? Like, this has to be the greatest marketing campaign ever. Are they like going to like fly them around or something? Like, <laughs> are they gonna fly them? No, there's nothing yeah. really to Overwatch. They're just gonna be flown around in a plane. Because, because, <laughs> because <they're> like, <laughs> there's no way. There is no way that these content creators they, they got told like. Hey, we're like pushing you in the Battle.net launcher. And they're just like, yo, this yeah. is the best shit. It has to be something major. I mean, this has got, to be sick. Well, whoa, 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 wait there. They, they've, they, they are essentially starving peasants at the moment. If you throw them a crumb, they will dance for you. No, I think, no, don't put it, it like that. It could be that. something literally as basic as just like, guys, listen. Your, your new comic book's about to drop. And they're like, oh my <laughs> God, know, new do, content. Do you want to no, know what I genuinely that, think man. it is? No, obviously not. Do you, want, do you want to know no. what I genuinely think it is? Yes. Like, no, no, no jokes, no Cappington. Content creators being like, they're not the lifeblood of a game, but they are a pretty good indicator of kind of the health of your game and a really good marketing arm of any game. So you want to keep the content creators happy, um, which is part of the reason why you want to keep them in the loop. And it's not a good look if all of your content creators are leaving for other games. Partly because Overwatch is getting no updates and no ground is really being broken in terms of any sort of dates of Overwatch 2 or anything like that. I think, obviously, I think it's pretty obvious that the news probably pertains to Overwatch 2. And also, I like to imagine that it probably is going to tie into some way to actually benefit their channels in particular, which makes me think that it's going to be incorporating drops into some sort of beta system with Overwatch 2. That's my... That's my I mean, no funny many... business take of what I think would be the only thing to get these people happy and excited about streaming Overwatch and keeping and staying committed to the game would be some way to actually boost their own streams and platforms. And, and that's going to be probably for a drop system for Overwatch probably. 2. Because if there is yeah. no Overwatch 2 beta by the time Overwatch League is released, they have thrown this year. There needs to be a way for people to be able to play Overwatch 2 in 2022. Otherwise, it's, it's fucking madness. It's crazy. You can't play it on the game when nobody else can play it and none of the players can practice on it. By the way, a lot of these tweets. I mean, I agree with you as well, Bren. I think that's an incredible... I mean, how many times have we brought that up on the show, the idea of uh, you watch the stream, you get the drop, you get to play in the beta. The problem is that it doesn't seem like that, it, or at least it didn't seem like that was the pathway that they were going down. But uh, all of these tweets are talking about 2022. They're not talking about the end of the off-season. They're not talking... There's no date specified here. It's just the year. Mm -hmm. And... That means it could still be a long time away. I, we don't I, really know any of this stuff. Like they, this could be the content creators <laughs> being given a date for a beta that they never thought they were even going to get until summer. You know, mm -hmm. and they might have said to them, "There's going to be a beta dropping at the same time as Overwatch League in April." Well, that's still four months away. You know what? But that yeah. would make people very excited because they were expecting it in August or October or what? You know, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. the, Sooner Whatever rather they later. internally were expecting it. You know, just the timelines being moved up, I think, would cause people to overdose on hopium. So uh, there's just such a massive range of things that could trigger this result. I've reached out and, you know, I've been putting my feelers out there. Little, little viney growths, yeah, you know. Little birds going people. out there. And for the, purpose, the for the purpose for everyone, uh, no, I don't think 
Anyone that potentially was under an NDA did not give me any information. So there you go. Anyone that was under an NDA <laughs> give me information. Everyone's safe. All the creators are safe. But I have managed through divination and like various <laughs> things to be like there. Are, there's several nebulous dates floating Leaks? about that that I don't know. But I don't know like which one is accurate or which is concrete. And also with these nebulous dates, zero information is given still. So yeah. I simply can't even tell you like what. What would it even mean? It could simply mean that this is the day that that Jeff is gonna do a late fucking Christmas stream or something. Jeff? You know? Like I don't fucking know. Jeff returns. Like, he just returns, <laughs> returns and does a late Christmas stream and then he leaves. Like I don't fucking know. Like I simply don't know what any of this. Okay, mean. but you're gonna no... say what the date is. I mean, I, 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 no, I <laughs> listen. Too many dates. I, I'll say it because I've got listen. I've been keeping my ear to the ground. I've been hearing a couple of rumors. Three to four months. And again, haven't heard anything what it pertains to. Don't know what it is that is going to be announced or released. But listen, we need some fucking that's content. That's the Overwatch League. We need that's some content. That's the Overwatch content. League start date. Oh, that's the start date of the heard. Overwatch League. That's <laughs> oh, what they yeah. were telling me. God, that makes sense. But it, it, that, that kind of timeline of what, I, what they were syncing up does make me think that it would have to be um, like an Overwatch 2 beta access, I think, because you'd want to try and sync it up with the start of the Overwatch League in 2022. Or, or could also be... Go on, Jonathan. Or it's probably just like the content creators being able to like play it and like release it on their channels or something. Yeah, it doesn't have necessarily you know? have to be drops. Yeah, maybe. The thing is, as a content creator, especially one that's like very heavily invested in one game and you haven't diversified heavily, you're still going to be extremely happy even without drops to get access to a beta to play because it's something oh, new mate, for your can channel. You imagine, can you imagine how much that would piss people off? No, if, if, if it's not, if, if there's months from people. now, if the big thing is just like a beta, this is this is an int. This is a straight well, up. Team 4 run it down mid. <laughs> I don't know if that's a Team 4 run it down mid. I think that's a Team 4 doing the minimum necessary. I think a beta at the same time as the Overwatch League drops is actually minimum necessary to get the hype flowing. Remember that this, this is not a scenario with Overwatch 2 where it just has to be big enough to keep the ship rolling. This has to be big enough with 2022 that your game massively grows. Yeah, That's what we're talking about here. It has to be big enough that you can actually draw in all of those old players or draw in massive new players and make the game itself grow a lot and not just tick along at the same kind of level so you need to be putting in infrastructure in place early to be able to get those players in to get that that attention in you can't spend a whole year just pissing around doing nothing or at least externally showing nothing mm -hmm. very interesting I, I i had initially not initially Kind of recently, I had heard some worrying <laughs> things. Uh, th that's when I kept my ear to the ground. That's what I heard. Some some worrying things. But then this came out, and like everyone's so happy. So I'm a bit confused. I don't know how to feel. Did you hear Why are we in the creator from the content creators? I mean, I was. We are content meeting? creators, in fact. Where's yeah, our we are are fact. Where's yeah. our, By the way, our meeting? literally created more content content than the Overwatch League YouTube channel recently. <laughs> if that's a metric to go by, probably one more video views than they have. every month. <laughs> one Where's video every huh? month. So if, the, if that's the bar, we're fucking dunking over it. Uh huh. I haven't received a word. Yeah. Not so a bit of information. I, I wasn't in that meeting and I heard some a concerning detail. But, you mm. know, everyone seems really happy about the content creator. So <laughs> who knows? I'm conflicted. Dude, this segment is so. <laughs> no. right now. I hate this. I hate yeah. this Are you telling us you know something, Connor? No, I'm saying I don't know anything. That's the other <laughs> point. I don't know shit, and we're just fucking. We're just. How many of the my content creators are making content like? Yeah, I wasn't in the content creator meetings. I don't know what the, what to say. Yeah, <laughs> and like just they know. We're just Everyone putting our like, asses up and to we're the just microphone. Sitting here, like, we don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels very much like making any content around roster moves for next year when you don't know what the game is. It's just a big blob of it's nothing. Different. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have listened to the roster. has been signed. Yes, that's true. That's like true. we know the game, we know that it's Overwatch Two. We don't know anything about the game. <laughs> it is ludicrous, isn't it? It's absolutely ludicrous. We've all gone mad. We've all just gone mad. People from outside Overwatch must look at us and think, "This we is are my just livelihood." Insane. Please, please, give me something. I, I 
I stopped by a pharmacy. I just signed signed a fucking 14 month lease. Give me something. We need you. Please. Say something good. (laughs) I mean, you know what would happen if Matt was here. He'd be sat in the corner going. Dude, I'm I'm, honestly, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Matt is going to catch hands the next time I see this dude. I'm tired of of this dude. (laughs) He's ready. I'm tired of this man and his statements and all this bullshit. I'm tired of this man. I'm gonna send him, put him in the fellowship. Send him to Mordor. I'm done. Like, I'm with this <laughs> put guy. Let's, him in the don't, fellowship. Let, let's just, it's just. Uh, oh, jeez. Do we want to go to the second part? Yeah, let's go to the second part. Go, so the, the second part of this, I can't pronounce this this first word. Ne- negligence to yeah. leave yeah, our pros it. in the dark. This is um, this is like the take that's coming around a lot of pro players. I think was it was it Don who posted this? Don Dante. Yeah, I mean. About, um, and you know, I well, you know, th- those are the names that like tweeted out. But I think, I, th- I think a lot of posts feel this way without oh, absolutely. actually yeah. saying it. And it, it, for me, from my perspective, is I was talking earlier about how the content creators are like the lifeblood, not the lifeblood, but they are the marketing arm of your game. It's an indicator of the health of your game to a certain degree as well. And some of the pro players cross over into that, um, but also. Uh, your pro players are locked into next. This is my pessimistic view of this. Is like you don't need to give the. They, they probably, I think, from their perspective, they either have a plan to tell pro players at a later portion of the time within like a, a timeline. So they're going to start with content creators and then tell pro players what's going on, or they just feel like the pro players are going to be locked into next year anyway. They don't really need to be privy of the internal details because they're along for the ride no matter what good one i really like this tweet from dante oh this this, dude dante's twitter timeline has just been absolute fire recently you know what i love as well i love the players that got into the overwatch league when they were young and naive and have since learned how life works and they've just learned by getting railed constantly year (laughs) after year and this this railing has turned into knowledge and experience and it turns out (laughs) tweets like this and it's so fucking funny to me that you've just got players that previously would have just been you know bright eyed and bushy tailed and they're just looking out into the world and like oh i've watched two i can't wait for some more some more info and now they're just now they're just <laughs> wee woo on the fucking <laughs> on the timeline mm-hmm. also what kind of apartment cool. is he applying to where your lease lengths uh i mean what lease length would he even be going for here surely a 12 month one no yeah but yeah, I mean, like, probably. theoretically, you could argue, like, if maybe he, you can get, like, six to eight month leases and then, like, move to a different location, right? Or, like, go, or maybe go back mm. home and live with his parents or, like, That's you know, probably what he wants to do, right? what he's looking for. So. Do they, at the start and end dates of the Overwatch League, not public? No. They are public, but had that as far as right? we'll, but... Didn't Hastro yeah, leak it? Yeah, they are it? public, I think. I think Hastro <laughs> leaked it. He said it was in April on Twitter <laughs> and then deleted yeah, the tweet. I don't, I, 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 all I know, see, this is so. Here's the thing, too, about this is that there was only one player invited to this meeting, by the way, and it was also the game's essentially biggest content creator in a way, Super. Yeah. And Super slept in and didn't go to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Super missed it. So they didn't even get the one professional player that would have been in there uh, in the meeting, who is also the game's, I think, at this point, in some the ways, the face of the game, the biggest, uh-huh. con- cre- the biggest content creator for Overwatch in many ways. So that's like, funny. I don't even know like what's going on with that, but uh, it also is, to my knowledge, currently too. We'll talk about like the lack of player knowledge. As far as I'm aware, this current point in time. Now, granted, there are still, as we stated, what appears to be four months until the season starts. So there's still lots of time going on. But they had already had the. When did all the rosters had to be finalized? Like January fourth or something. January or December, somewhere like that. And as far as I'm aware, according to from what I've heard so far, almost no teams have had any contact with the Overwatch League. In months. Hmm. So, uh, okay. And this um, is their, ju- and, and apparently it's just now fuck, what starting to say? roll out, getting close to like, it's getting, they're apparently now, Sean Miller, the new head uh, of the Overwatch, the new commissioner, is apparently starting to roll out these talks now. But this is yeah. when the roster deadlines have already essentially are happening. When now they're starting to do like touch bases with the roster. Deadline. So I'm like, and they still haven't even completed even close to any of them. Like, I don't know. So, I, I don't know. I mean, know. there's the definitely dark, been a transition the there. I don't, I don't necessarily blame the Overwatch League for that. I mean, there's, there's been a transition between 
commissioners, in lack of a better word. I mean, I don't think they even go by that role anymore. But like John Spector leaving for the actual Overwatch team, that marketing role he took on, and then bringing on Sean Miller to sort of replace him. <clears throat> so I don't really necessarily like blame the Overwatch League if that's been the case for not providing information. Like somebody probably should have done it. You know, if teams what? had questions, someone probably what should have provided those answers. What are they looking like, for? Start end dates, like the format, the tournament cycles, that yeah, kind of I thing. Yeah, I mean, like also, I mean, teams still don't know as far as I'm aware either. Like, <clears> when are they getting access to Overwatch 2? They can't practice. Their teams are practicing right now. That seems now to be the biggest issue. Of Overwatch 1. They're just practicing on workshop yeah. modes, you know? And they don't know when they're going to get access to play the game. I mean, that's, I, I, if I had to put for, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't know this. I'm purely speculating. But if I had to speculate, I'd say the Overwatch people probably don't know either. Because, yeah. It probably comes down to when they can do it from the development side. Well, you know I want I mean? to be careful on that point because I think, like, you know, there's probably some information that the owners and general managers know. Um, and I don't want to speculate that they don't know anything. But as it relates to, like, when the players can get their hands on Overwatch 2, that I could see still being, you know, sort of discussed because it's such a touchy subject, whatever. But, like, when it comes to scheduling, tournament format, stuff like that, I mean, that's kind of. I don't want to speculate what they do know and don't know in that regard. Because I mean, in terms I'm not, of building rosters, though, that they don't know about Overwatch Two right now. The as far as to my knowledge, GMs do not know. They yeah. Don't. In in terms of uh, trying to build rosters, you'd like to know when the tier two players get their hands on the game because that actually defines how much you can rely on upcoming talent as well. Yeah. And as, I mean, that information doesn't seem to be available anywhere. So. It just, it seems like an enormous who knows next year, which, is which has me troubling. interested what the content creators are up to because, or, or what they know, because I, I mean, they only exist in a very small portion of the Overwatch ecosystem. Maybe they're going to be happy, but a lot of other people are going to be yeah. really annoyed. I would say I content know. creators probably represent a larger portion of the Overwatch ecosystem than pro players in many ways. Um, but they don't intersect so Overwatch pros sometimes intersect with content creation because they do it on the side. Overwatch content creation rarely gives a shit about what's going on with the Overwatch League. Overwatch content creators could be super happy and the Overwatch League could be torched. The building could yeah. be set on fire and Overwatch content creators would just rub their hands and make videos about it. Are equivalent, right? We're assuming that like the priorities for Blizzard are the Overwatch League versus content creators and the general health of the game, right? Like, there could be two separate priorities there. Like, who knows? Sure the are. spheres have not conjoined. They have no. not, the conjunction is not yeah. happening. So I don't know. That's Pepe Witcher W. Fan. Season 2 just came out. Pepe W. What's season 2 what? Of The Witcher. I mean, you talking about The Witcher? We're all Witcher fans. Because I've just made the spheres have not conjoined. The conjunction of The Witcher. It's for Witcher. It's for... Toss Ste a coin Ste to the hero. Spoiler. spoiler. That's not a spoiler. Oh. That's anyway, I want to move on to this next topic because it's a bit more fun. I, I was I was about to go off and I realized, listen, I was getting a little bit too into my opening gag of trying to project my disappointments onto my friends through the podcast. <laughs> I didn't actually want to do that today, but we're getting close to it. Wrong only. This next topic here. I quite like this idea. Wrong only. What did the content creators find out? We've already speculated what we think was actually going to be happening. Um, wrong only. I'll start. The content creators get to co-stream an Overwatch 1 tournament with all the Overwatch League teams taking part and the winner gets Overwatch 2 beta access so they can practice. <laughs> but against no one, the winner gets Overwatch 2 Yeah, they can practice access, internally, which means they then have to hire, they have to, they have to get a 10-man team so they can do internal nice. 5v5 scrums. That's so smart of, of them if they were to do that because then they get more pro players get contracts. That's so yeah, smart. Yeah, more pro players get contracts and... Uh, the Overwatch League uh, has a really big team. You know, you know what? I, I like this topic, and I've seen genuine people thinking this. So it's not even from my imagination. <laughs> it's not a funny answer. People really think this is the case. I've seen a couple of comments on Reddit and Twitter and stuff like that saying, I bet they found out that Overwatch 2 is cancelled and it's all just happening on Overwatch 1, <laughs> and they're really happy about it. And I'm like, bro, what universe do you live in where that would be a good situation? Well, like where they just pissed response. away hours, years of development. <laughs> what? Well, okay. Can I've I, seen that for real. To salvage it's that, bad. though, are they bad. not? Do, maybe they're just thinking that it gets released as one big Overwatch One update, which which the PvP does anyway. 
Yeah, it does. Yeah. That's yeah. already been announced. Yeah, I don't know. I've heard I don't people know. say that they're just going to go back to 6v6. That Overwatch 2, all the work they've done on it, they're just reverting back to 6v6. <laughs> going to give up on as it. As if that's like... And there's, like yeah, what's Sigil of the State is just giving up on Overwatch 2, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's pretty bad. Johnny, do you have a wrong take? Because I have mine. I have mine ready. Maybe they're releasing a new uh, Deathmatch map. <laughs> oh! Yeah! <laughs> The savior. That could be it. I could do it. Oh god. I could do it. Mm. My wrong take is that they're creating they're getting creator codes for workshop modes. So every time you make like prop hunt and overwatch, the creators are gonna get they're gonna get fifty cents if you play the map. <laughs> you know, for a bit play. of money. So okay. then so then workshop one, Overwatch one creator codes and uh people the, then the creators are gonna be all living in content houses in Beverly Hills and shit. <laughs> Wild when you're playing like that one train custom mode where like you have to dodge Thomas the tank engine. I think the I think the content creators might have found out that they're adding hats to Overwatch 2. <laughs> I, I think that's the big thing. That's the huge release. The ghastly gibbous is being added to Overwatch 2. <laughs> Thank you god. can put it on anything. Thank fucking god. Yeah. I heard they're making Overwatch 2 items NFTs. Oh, mm. oh. So if you buy it, you actually get it as an NFT as well. <laughs> mm. Bryn, remember what we saw in Target? Uh, this is just this is really this is not even yeah, a wrong yeah. thing, but like they made the CS:GO NFT trading cards. Yep, and we found them in Target. Why yep. I found them? Yeah, so they're gonna do that, but they're gonna do them with Overwatch Two plushies, and each plushie. So you'll know when you pick up your plushie of Winston. It's like not only is your plushie unique. This is how much rainforest you burn down generating this NFT. <laughs> well, so then it's gonna be really really cool to see that knowledge out there. It's gonna be really cool. <laughs> uh, Wait, what is this trading CSGO trading card thing? They give we you a physical target. card and it's an NFT. Yeah. Yep, we it's were in an Target NFT and it was a pack card. of eSports. I don't think it was just CSGO. I think it was pro players and eSports. It was $40. It was a pack of cards with pro players on them. And um, you got like two NFTs with it. You could scan it and get two NFTs, random NFTs from, of the players, I guess. Um, and they were selling it in Target. There was one left, and we thought about buying it as a gag, and then we decided we're not going to because oh they my, were like God, it was expensive. Bucks. Yeah, that it wasn't really it. It was like a, it was a smaller pack. Yeah, it was. A, it, it, yeah. it was a six. It was like a thirty or sixty pack or something. It was Someone like 50 had bucks. cut it in half. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hundred twenty-three dollars. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be paying that. Oh my God! I just found these NFTs. They, they have like you know how in like FIFA fan uh, like FIFA fantasy or whatever they have like the cards like the players mm -hmm. have like stats and stuff. They've just done that, but for Counter Strike. Really? Yeah. So they have like Forest from Ninjas in Pajamas, eighty six accuracy, seventy five imp, whatever that means, sixty seven assist, eighty seventy nine utility. Forest has seventy nine utility, ninety six experience. Wow, good stats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, any other wrong takes, Dad? Here? I, I, I'm burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's what the take. content creators found out. Bren's burnt out, and they all started <laughs> tweeting. Wrong, <laughs> bug <Bog> jam. <laughs> he said, "Finally, this guy's done. Get him out of here." <laughs> Everyone was there. Aaron Keller, Jeff Goodman, <laughs> just everybody in the same room going. <laughs> We've finally done it. We've finally got rid of this bozo. We've finally done it. Bren is gone. We've got him. He's done. He's out of here. They brought back all the old commissioners. Yes. Andrew was there. John Spector was there. Everyone was just like talking about it. Uh... I, I, I will say, I went to that thread where they're like expressing, uh, content creators expressing like excitement or whatever. And if you sort by controversial or like reach the bottom of it, some people are so burnt out. Like they're so jaded. Yeah. So, some dudes literally just like, they're, they're just baiting us. That's the that's the only outcome. It's literally only bait. Like <laughs> totally serious. Like they don't believe this is actually genuine excitement. Oh, I, I did see some people like hype that. up the game that, that they're reliant on for their livelihood. You know that seems yeah. like a bait. Yeah, mm. That 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 is classic conspiracy theory yeah. thinking, though, as well. The idea that you could get all of the content creators in the meeting to just agree for a gag or for money that they would do this and none of them would talk about how the fact that it's a gag or bullshit or whatever that that would, it would take some otherworldly um <laughs> resilience for them not to just blurt out that it was a funny goof to well, the honor when he dms them
They signed NDAs, so they can't. And also, oh, no. also you're saying not they didn't sign NDAs with Blizzard. They signed NDAs with the lead content creator, Jane, the inventor of esports, got them all together and said, "Hey, we're going to troll some people on Reddit in order no, to maximize our signed, profit they, margin." They locked them up into that, and then Ugh. because Overwatch Two is canceled, they took the rest of the development money and paid them all individually with the NDAs, so they wouldn't talk of about course. it. Of course, Overwatch Two is canceled. Mm. That's I my think, final Of course, we should move on off this yes. topic okay. personally. We've, uh, we've, we've, the joke is, it's, it's done. It's finished. The joke being, I'm not going to say it. Um, God, the, I really uh, hope Mecco gets his shoes, though. Yeah, really yeah Mecco doesn't get his shoes. Yeah, really gets, I hope he gets his shoes. Parapan is rejoining Overwatch, the Overwatch scene. He left Valorant, actually, coming off the back of it. This is the next news topic that we've got here. Um, and coming off the back of, honestly, uh, a pretty, Rock solid performance at the current biggest um, Valorant tournament that just happened, Champs. So if any of you guys are listening or unaware, it's like the biggest tournament of the year. Padapan was there on a team and he actually took a break from Valorant as well. Turned up and they just had some some joyous whimsy and they just came, they rolled the competition to a certain degree and they made it pretty far within the tournament. And now Padapan has uh, ended up, obviously the rumor being true that he's ended up joining the Gladiators here. And... Um, Honestly, uh, very happy to see Padapan see success, to be honest. Like, even when he was so young, like, watching this guy compete at, what, 14, 15? And for the longest time, we're just wondering, God, when are we going to see this guy, like, in the league or in some high-level competition? Finally, we get to see it. He's an absolute freak of nature. He's, he is an absolute world-class talent. Not only the fact that, you know, it was, we know he's very capable of it from his time in Overwatch, but the fact that he's been able to do it in multiple games and he's just going to go back to Overwatch, you know, and he's just going to be doing it again, it's, it speaks, I think, to, uh, to the level of skill and talent he possesses. Yeah, people might not think too much of the fact that... I mean, if you're good in Valorant, that doesn't mean you're going to be good in Overwatch too, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but the fact that he was really good at a very young age in Overwatch 1... And he then moved into Valorant and was immediately good in that as well. I mean, immediately too. Like he played in April and he was already, you could tell that he had talent. And then he's recently done even better at the most recent event. Yeah. But that that to me is the skill set you are looking for for an Overwatch 2 player. It's a new game, which is kind of like when you he was playing Overwatch in 2017. I think it was the 2017 World Cup, wasn't it? Maybe 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and so... You, you know, that's early on in the game. Guy gets a lot of success. Valorant, early on in the game, guy gets a lot of success. He's got incredible mechanical talent and the, the ability to dominate a game with his play. I think that's perfect for a more DPS-focused Overwatch 2. This guy, I, I feel pretty confident that he's going to be electric. I hope he's in the, the lineup a lot, though, um, rotation-wise, because he's got a pretty solid DPS lineup to work around with now with Glads. I mean, Patapan uh ons and kebster it's uh it's a very very good dps lineup as long as patapan is still in good form here uh but i'm i'm hopefully i'm and i'm not too worried about it but it would be a shame if somehow the metas work out such a way to where he doesn't get a lot of play time to where he just leaves valorant after uh, riding off the success of this like ridiculous international tournament from him and doesn't see a lot of play time in the overwatch league you know like that would be the ultimate cosmic dick flattening so I'm really hoping that I'm really hoping hope I can't speak. I'm really hoping that he the, the meta is going to work out to where the lineup is good. But I think it should be fine because he's kind of an ultra flex in some ways. Um, yeah, and they've got so a good rotation as well. In. If yeah, if, like if they manage to get to a position where you need double flex support, uh, sorry, double flex DPS. I mean, you're always putting Paddy and Kepster in in that instance. Yeah. I mean, Ans is you know really specialized. It looks like on that roster as a long range hit scan. And uh, also it. I think this is a really good opportunity for Kevster and Parifan to really build that uh, DPS duo relationship. One of the things that really stood out for me this season was like how close Birdring and Kevster was. And if you spoke to either of them, watched any of like the LA Gladius clips from like their facility, even watched their streams, like Kevster and Birdring would always practice with each other. They were like two of the closest guys on the team. And I think Parifan and Kevster could like sort of have a similar uh relationship which is like a great foundation for um a dps duo in overwatch 2 um you know an overwatch league team so um yeah i think a kevster party fan duo could be super sick i'm willing to go back to one of my previous hot takes which was that the gladiators had the best roster on paper heading into overwatch 2 and previously 
you know, you brought up the um, the San Fran- uh, sorry, the Shanghai Dragons because obviously, you know, they just won a bunch in Overwatch One. And, I mean, they're an incredible team, but with the addition of Padapan, I think it bears revisiting the uh, that idea that they might genuinely have the best roster on paper. They've got such a deep DPS lineup. I mean, sure, who are you might get some play on Shanghai, but the rotation of Kevstar, Ants, and Padapan is really well thought out as well mm-hmm. as just being cracked. <clears throat> and then, I mean, who the hell knows what people are going to do when it comes to tanks? So I feel I feel very shaky on any grounds of rating, you know, Space and Reiner versus, who is it? Um, is it? It's still Fate and Void, right? Uh, over on the Shanghai Dragons. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but I mean, if you look at the support line as well, Iziaki Li Jigon as your normal, or Iziaki Molly Li Jigon, that's, that's pretty damn similar to Shu Skewed and Funny Astro. I mean, you've got like some of the best players from most recent times. Some of the players you could be the most confident in their ability being mega high. I'm, I'm feeling good about this Gladiators roster. They are punching for a championship, and it just makes me so bewildered and confused why Dipe bailed out of the project, citing the fact that they weren't, they, the like budget or lack of support. They weren't or something able to like get that. the, the oh, players yeah. they wanted. I mean, yeah. what did he want them to genetically create freak beasts that were guaranteed <laughs> to win the league? It, they've signed some of the best, they've signed potentially the best on paper roster that you have coming into Overwatch 2. And I, 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 you know, I'm not saying for certain because Shanghai Dragons have still got an insanely good roster, but this has got to be number two, if not number one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, this is a extremely good roster. And I'm really excited to get a rare W here to see Patapan come back because I think he never really got a big shot because he was so young in Overwatch when he was still playing. Yeah. Um. So we, the, most people, especially a lot of Overwatch League viewers, I feel, have not really experienced. Like there was World Cup, which there was a lot of crossover for, but this was how. When was this World Cup performance again? Like twenty. It was like 2018, 2019. 20, 2019 really, was the last one. Yeah, he played in twenty eighteen. Played in twenty eighteen in Thailand. Yeah, right? it he was twenty eighteen. Yeah. He played against Jonathan, didn't mm-hmm. he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So it's been a while since he's even been on like a stage that had a lot of viewers, but other other than champions, obviously. But like in terms of Overwatch, if we click um, on his name on here, we'll show what things he's played in. Yeah, it'll probably it'll click probably show. Pan's but either name way, on. I'm I'm very excited to see him come back. And he himself has, has said because I think a lot of us have speculated, well, it's like a money thing, where like SEA yeah. Valorant like does not pay as much as the minimum salary for Overwatch League if he's getting minimum. But also yeah. he he's gone and he's done some interviews and he's actually talked about how he actually wanted to come back to Overwatch. He wanted to come back because the game was just more exciting to him than Valorant. Oh. Like, because some people are just, they just love the gameplay loop of like yeah. a hero shooter, you know? Because Valorant's <laughs> not that. It's not a hero shooter at its core, you know? It's, it's an, it's an <laughs> act shooter with agents. Oh, there we go. The, um, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's one, one of the advantages that Overwatch has as an esports title compared to other more sexier esports that are around at the moment um, is. Arguably, if you're a pro player, you're going to get supported more. And even then, there's an argument that that's not really the case as much because of the contract changes, which I will touch on later because there's a good topic to bring mm. it up in. Um, but in general, you are right. It's like Overwatch is paying more for these high-quality players compared to other esports titles that haven't set up that infrastructure yet. That's one of the things that I think the Overwatch League should be well, leveraging, honestly, is strength of schedule or strength of the contracts for individual players. But yeah. Yeah, you've also I mean comparing across the scenes the reason that Panipan has made the move back where most people wouldn't is because he's playing from Southeast Asia. Yep. You know, Overwatch Overwatch supports the top 20 teams to a pretty solid degree. But if you look at the amount of salaried players in, you know, the I mean the title here to compare is Valorant. There are way more than 20 teams being salaried in Valorant yeah, sure. to you know, to higher levels as well. The average would be higher. The median would, well, the median would be dragged way down, actually. Uh, in fact, the average would be dragged way down as well. But when you look at that, the top 20, the average would be way higher. Yeah. Um, but he just wasn't in the, the top 20 because he's playing from Southeast Asia. So it's, uh, it's a good move for him. I hope he kicks fucking ass yeah. and returns back to Valorant whenever he wants to as well. Because the guy is just, I love seeing these recent modern esports um travelers because we had them in the past from dead game to dead game but we've never really been at the place in esports where you could kind of hop from 
living title to living title with so much success. I feel like recently we've seen a lot of that within the FPS genre where people hop from a game that's buzzing to another game that's buzzing yeah. and they're, 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 they're good at both Halo. and they can just kind of juggle it around. Yeah. yeah. Thinking like Zoms, for example, you know, he, he chased the bag, but it wasn't like Overwatch was dead when he moved on. Overwatch was still doing fine. Like the, the guy could have yeah. potentially had a career there. It's just, I find it really cool that we're at that point in esports where you can be amazing, elite at two games and you have the decision. Padipan has the decision right now which game he wants to play. That's just mm -hmm. sick. It is quite cool, isn't it? Quite cool to think about. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll move on to the next topic um, as well, which is going to be talking about the acquisition for, for Toronto and the DPS line of Aldo and Finale. Finale? Final? Yeah, finale. finale. Yeah. Finale. I finale. Yeah. And, um, and that kind of acquisition is being made here. Um, what is the overall Toronto team looking like? I mean, I'll be brutally honest. Pretty tasty. I, I, yeah, I havenven't been keeping up with the, with the roster news as much. But, it's pretty um, good. It, it's it, looking it's, all right. Yeah, they got some, some pretty good talent here. So I'll just run it down for you since yeah. you're sitting over there, Brent. So for tanks, they have Muse and Hotba. Pretty decent tank line. That is, yeah. Backline is Twilight and Chorong. Pretty decent backline. Yep. And now they finalized their DPS set, which is Hisu, Finale, and Aldo. And Aldo um, is getting a lot of hype, particularly from Avril. <laughs> Some which have responded that they're a bit uh, displeased, I suppose, with how much uh, Avril is hyping up Aldo. But... Um, Supposedly way better than his Lono Spitfire days. Um, Finale, I did some bot scouting for. He used to play for Uprising Academy. Uh, played some Echo, uh, some of those projectile roles. I think I saw him play some Farah, for example. Um, but he's not. he wasn't like a main DPS player for the Uprising Academy. And I think he'll slot into that role here on this team as well. So, you know, he's to Ronaldo might take up a lot of time, depending, of course, what, what heroes are going to be played. But Finale just seemed to me like he, he'll be like a third DPS yeah. um, kind of player. But judging based on you know what I saw from him gameplay wise, I, I don't think he could become like a primary DPS in um, you know team to, to compete though. in the Overwatch League. Crazy thing is with cool. um, with the move into Overwatch two as well, and the amount of just unknown variables it does add. You, I feel like. Investing into a roster and spending a lot of money on it on players you know are proven in Overwatch 1 is a good way to reduce risk as you move into Overwatch 2. Like, you're pretty much guaranteed to have, like, at least an average level performance going into, Overwatch, into the Overwatch League. At least, like, if you're spending a lot of money. But I feel like it's also a good time to potentially take risks where there might be holes because if you can bank instead on finding the right meta, the right comps to be played, because with the introduction of new heroes, I mean, actually... I say that we don't even know if the new heroes would be in the no. Overwatch Two. Um, hey, maybe the content creators know. League. Maybe the content uh, creators know. About. Yeah, but assuming that we do get Overwatch Two with the new heroes with the Overwatch League, I think you. It's almost like where there would be perceivable holes in a roster. Like I'm, I'm looking at this roster on paper and I'm saying, okay, well the tank. The tanks look really solid to be able to pick up a singular role. I think you've got a lot of experience there. I think the support line as well. With just two supports, you might run into issues, but possibly not. And then with the DPS, okay, well, you know, the potential's there as well. It, the risks are, I'm not going to say mitigated, but you never know. Like, I feel like if you fall into the right meta, the right comps, you are going to have success uh, more likely compared to Overwatch 1 that's remained relatively stagnant in terms of the updates and additions that it's had. It's, it's almost like it's a good time to take risks with a roster in next year with the, with, the, with the state of the game, given the fact that, oh, I'm just going off the back of um, assuming that we will get new heroes next year. Well, we were talking to Albert a bit about that last week as well and the kind of the different philosophies that teams have inside of it. I mean, teams are going for totally different things. And it seems like Toronto have paid some decent money for a pretty stable full Korean roster, right? Like yeah. what they're going for here is a roster with some level of proven talent, some level of upcoming talent as well. And the upcoming talent that they've signed is pretty damn good. I, I was surprised by Avril's tweet, mostly, not because Aldo is good, but because it implied that he played poorly on London. I actually thought he was one of the shining lights of that London team and was impressed by his performance in that season when he played for them. I thought Aldo looked pretty decent then, yeah. and um, 
uh, you know, I wanted to see more of him on a better team. That team was a horrendous mishmash of like an A team and a B team. And then they tried to create a, a, a good team out of the middle of the two of them. And throughout it all, if you watched back from all those POV, he was hitting some nasty stuff. He looked like he had um, he had some talent. Mm -hmm. So I believe it. My question is, who plays the Tracer on this team? And well, it's a very... Both, both all though and Finale can play Tracer. So, well, so can Hisu as well, but yeah. as far as I'm aware, I mean, this might be my own ignorance of not knowing the contender's talent enough, but as far as I'm aware, they don't play it as their their main role, do they? Are they they're like flex DPS fill tracer kind of players, are they not? Uh, yeah, that's how, what it seems like to me as well, is a similar role, yes. But, I mean, if you give them some time to grind, grind it, you know, make it their main role. Like, to me, when I look at this roster, I feel like Hisu is probably going to be primarily focused on hit scan and then, like, some, and then Tracer when they need Tracer. Yeah. And then, like, and then if they need to play, like, double flex DPS, they have them both in or, like, so I don't think their hero rotation is going to be too crazy for this team. Like, there is some potential holes with their Tracer play, but I feel like if you just grind it, give them some time to Overwatch League level, like, they're probably be fine, so they've already put time on it. I yeah. feel like we've got to the point as well, where if you are, you're not just expected to be able to specialize in Tracer anymore, like it used to be the case, but nowadays you need to be able to play a variety of stuff, which includes... Oh, of course, of course. I imagine Hisu would be the player, no? Potentially, yeah. I've just never been that impressed with Hisu's Tracer. I think his yeah. Tracer's been like, all right, but most of the time, if Tracer's being played, and if I'm thinking about Overwatch 2 being 5v5, Tracer is up somewhere towards the top of my list in terms of Characters that can just take over the game. Expected value. In a 5v5 setting. Yeah, I mean, you're you're probably going to get some some metas where you can get carry level. I will potentially win you a tournament by just being better than the opponent's tracer. That's That's the, been the history across Overwatch 1, and especially at the beginning of the game when the game was a lot messier, you know, not the very beginning, but you know, 2017 yeah. onwards. That was the that was the primary meta was the fact that Tracer was just the dominant DPS pick. I don't really see us going too far away from that, especially when things get messier. Tracer really benefits from that. I mean, you might see Sombra, you might see long range hit scan. We might be way off with this, as with all of our speculation, just because it comes down to what the game looks like and we haven't played the game or seen the game played. But it's when I look at rosters like this, I think who's going to go up against the best Tracer players in the world? And I don't really see who it is for this roster, sure. even though I like the roster overall. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, I, I think it's a pretty good ro roster in conclusion. Yeah. So I, yeah. this is probably the, this is the best tr roster Toronto Defiant has ever had, I think, Damn. Yeah. relative to the competition. I last year too. <laughs> and it's... I was high up on Toronto last year. That was yeah. They didn't do yeah, badly but... though. They were they like slapped in the middle of the no. table, right? They were just like not the what I wanted from that team. But this is yeah, but you were off I, the goop on them last year. I was also. I mean, you rated, you rated them. them higher than oh yeah, you and Bren both yeah. rated them higher yeah. than anybody else in the yeah. scene. I was really big on that team. I do think that this is a more consistent vision for them though, because now they just have a full Korean roster. They're not like a Logics hanging out in the mix randomly, and mm -hmm. they don't have Beast Halo there randomly, and it's an overall much more consistent vision for their team, yeah. I think. I think also they've probably gotten better flex DPS picks than Niced um, with the addition of Aldo and Finale, um, which are very big for Watch 2. Yep. Uh, and their tank situation on paper should have gotten better, I think, um, with Muse and the Hoppa. Well, so, I, the thing overall, that I like as well about this is the structure of it with KDG, who... ADG hasn't really showcased, I don't think, the best results with the rosters that he's had recently if, uh, off the top of my head. Um, but Moby Dick came back to the team. Moby Dick used to be the coach of this team way back in the day um, and then was on Philadelphia Fusion and worked with KDG when he was on Philly. And now they're on this team together at, uh, at the same time, um, which underrated aspect, but having coaching staff that work well together, presumably, I mean, they know they work well together. They've worked with each other before and now yeah. they've you know, whatever, there's a decision was made for them to both work on the same project, the same team, which I think okay. bodes well. Yeah. I'm really going to enjoy following this team as well. I think they have a lot of interesting storylines. Like KDG, as you just mentioned, I think that's an interesting storyline. Like, can KDG actually, like, get good with this roster? Because last year was a bit of a disappointment. Mm -hmm. And just talking about Aldo as well, like, Sideshow, 
posting the question like who can step up and play tracer and like battle some of the best tracers in the league i think it's gonna come down to aldo um based on some of the playing contenders um yeah and i think that's going to be a very interesting storyline to follow whereas i think some people already they just like take that for granted like aldo is gonna come in and just like mess up some of the best hit scan players in the league i don't really want to take that for granted i think that's a developing storyline and i'm just very curious to see how that goes um twilight you know yeah the support line um again like the front line the tanks are, are, are very interesting to follow as well especially going into wars 2 i think this is a very interesting team like i can't wait to watch and follow this team because i think they have a role of interesting storylines in that regard okay moving on to the next topic then it actually does derive off of this and it's about the toronto defiant because the uh someone involved in the team and the high ups side of things i remember seeing a tweet um talked about they've signed three-year contracts for all of these players um and the topic we've got is right to sign three-year player contracts but in a prior in a previous lifetime in at the beginning of the overwatch league when there was guarantees for the players and their contracts this would have been a bad decision to make because we've seen dallas do something similar i think uh houston outlaws did something similar very early on it always backfired because you just need that kind of flexibility however the contract system doesn't really work that way anymore. I don't. I can't remember when these changes were made. Was it in, during COVID? It was. In, it was 2020. Teams they needed a bit yeah. more um, guarantees, Maybe I think. Where uh, I, I think what they used as the example was a couple of bad actors within the teams, because there was a couple of examples where players were refusing to play, and um, the contracts got kind of shifted and changed so that they could drop them with just basically one month's pay. Um, even if you sign longer contracts, I'm pretty sure that happened to, I want to say Logics, but I can't remember. It also happened, well, it happened to Valiant all guys. the Valiant players. So. But also, yes. the, to, the yeah. important thing to point out there as well is that the base contract, as far as I'm aware, like the boilerplate thing, is minimum one month's pay. But yes. as with, you know, the minimum salary is 50k, but not everyone is being paid 50k. You can negotiate higher buyout amounts if if you wanted to you know at the beginning of your negotiation with let's say the toronto defiant yeah. you might think well i'm signing a three-year contract here if they want to let me go at some point i'm going to try and make it expensive for them so i'm going to push my salary up a little bit let's say i negotiate a 70k salary instead of an 80k salary right. but i make sure that i get three six months severance pay instead gotcha. of just the one so i'm not sure how much players have done that but that is an option within the contracts yeah. to be able to do that kind of stuff. So it's not that anyone can be let go with one month pay. It's that the minimum is one month pay. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I, and yeah, that's a good point to bring up because we don't know the actual precise decision. Um, but even still, it's it's still not a bad thing, I think, for Toronto to find to be signing players for three-year contracts because worst case scenario, if it is negotiated higher... I don't like the fact that the players have less power on their side of things when it comes to contracts. Like, I feel like if the league provides more support for the players like it did initially, that is generally the sign of a healthy ecosystem that has confidence in the future success. If the teams are more worried about potentially saving money in that regard, it, it, it's a lack of confidence is what it showcases to me, I think, externally. But um, yeah, I'm curious on what your guys' takes are on this as well. I'm aligned with you, I'd say. I think that it's essentially, there is no downside to an org currently signing really long contracts because of how the contracts are currently structured at their base. There's simply no downside. And you can, like Josh said, there are, you can stipulate to like, oh, you can negotiate for four months pay. But the current reality of how the Overwatch ecosystem works, in my view, is that very few players have the ability to even negotiate those extra protections. They, there's no, you have no negotiation power. What are you going to do? Like, not sign with them and then go to contenders uh, where there's... I mean, British Hurricane just dropped his roster. There's not even, yeah. there's not even academy yeah. players left. There's no academy teams left to even play for. You know, like, you can't... Uh, there's very little negotiating power and the players that do have negotiating power to say, like, I will get paid my full contract length or X amount of months of my contract length. They're already in such a good position anyways that it's an irrelevant... It's like a moot point to them in many cool. ways. Um, so... Uh, it might not be moot across the whole three years, though. That's where you really do sure. have to capitalize. Sure, on but your, I like, but very few teams value. I doubt will. Very few teams would pay out a full three-year contract if they asked, like unless it's oh like no, super, no 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 unless it's like of a course, super caliber player, and in which case also that's like a very like I what I said it's a very specific instance where like 
a player would even have any sort of power to negotiate with this. So it's like, I think for the most part, there is simply zero downsides because the player contracts are heavily structured in favor at their base for teams. Because like you get a player locked in a contract for three years, they don't work out. Like you just drop them, you know, you pay a month's pay or something like, cause it's very unlikely the player has any power to negotiate out of that deal currently. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, if they turn out to be really, really good, you can keep them at their salary for a while, or maybe like a base, a very small bump each year versus having to like renegotiate or you can sell them, you know, like there's like so many options you have available to you to get value for a I team mean, currently. On top of that as well, the, one of the bad parts for signing a three-year contract would be if the value of the league tanks afterwards. So let's say people are signing people at speculatively large salaries this year, expecting a rise in viewership, True. a rise in uh in revenue for the organizations heading into overwatch 2 overwatch 2 falls flat on its ass but the league keeps going and you're like oh well crap i've signed this guy for i've signed this guy for 80k across three years when actually if we re renegotiated right now i could get him for minimum contract well you just cut the guy and then ask to renegotiate and you you get the guy for the lower salary because you again have all of the leverage so in no instance does the player benefit from signing these long contracts, as far as I can tell, yeah. unless they've specifically negotiated extra protections in there. And like Connor said, they don't really have any negotiating power unless they're people like Padipan who can play multiple games or people like Super and they have ridiculous streams or yeah. they're a great player and people need them to win championships. Hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if like a top tier player like that could like change the way overwatch league contracts are made like in the future like if super just came out and just like i want to guarantee like money guaranteed in my contract which is pretty regular in you know sports like nba nfl to protect the players in that kind of regard like setting a precedent like that obviously that that's probably like five ten years away but if a player of that gravitas could at some point um help the players in their negotiations a little bit mm. i think that would probably be the next thing it's all I mean, esports, gaming, even streaming is such a short-term career anyway. You know, even the best, even the biggest, most uh, high-revenue streamers in the world know that they don't have it in them to do it until they're 65 and, uh, you know, looking to retire like a like a nine-to-five job. So the ethos is get money now and squirrel it away for later or invest it in the right things or whatever for the future. So I think people would generally just be bias towards getting the getting the money while they can mm. rather than protecting themselves if they end up getting cut in the future yeah anyway moving on <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the next topic uh the valor the valley oh my god i was about to say the valorant Whoa. the valiant recover their Ooh. reputation can they recover their reputation is the question that we've all got i think because um from a lot of people's perspectives obviously it's still fresh in my mind how Essentially, the was it the Immortal Gaming Group kind of uh, essentially screwed over the the responsibilities that they had when they bought into the league by um, um, kind of shifting over the the ownership to another group that's based in China, and um, a bunch of the players got got owned. Um, but this is a fresh year where there's not really opportunities for that to happen. And at the end of the day. Uh, I feel like most of the blame does lie on the Immortal Gaming Group for the prior stuff that went on back in, I mean, was it, it was, was it last year, 2021? I've lost, yeah, last I've lost the concept of time. I mean, it wasn't quite a year year ago, ago because it was right before the season right. began. But okay. it was yeah. nearly. Um, and this is essentially just, it's, it's the company who are running this Valiant, uh, Valiant account or Valiant org and... Uh, I feel like the, the community is already on the same page that you can't really blame the players at all at any point for this. The question is just, is there any goodwill left to be gained by the Valiant fans? I think they've done a good job here. If you were trying to regain um, you know, reputation, fan support, fan trust as well, but you want to keep things as a Chinese roster, signing No Hill and giving him the keys to the castle Seems like a great idea to me. Like I, I think that that is the number one thing that you could have done heading into this offseason. Um, it reminds me, in some sense, of uh, looking at what the Dallas Fuel were doing. After the Dallas Fuel had just cocked things up year after year after year and burnt money all over the place, had that jack-in-the-box <laughs> animation, which, you know, hit cartoon, 
but uh, don't think anyone really watched it. And then more <laughs> more money being burnt all over the place. And then they finally give the keys to Rush and ask him to build a championship caliber roster, which yeah. he absolutely did by leaning on his network and people that want to play with him. I think essentially the Valiant look like they've just given the keys to No Hill and said, make us a team as good as Team CC and we'll be happy. Yeah, I, I think still though, it's kind of late in the offseason, I suppose, because like there was even like a phase where people were like, well, is No Hill going to get signed at all? Which just tells you how late in the offseason it really got mm-hmm. before he got signed to the Valiant. Um, you know, some of these signings are really good. I think we covered it very briefly with Albert last week, you and me, Josh. But I'm essentially like kind of bought in. Uh, the two rumors that have yet to be confirmed are Becky uh, being signed to this roster and Coldest that came out was a rumor yeah. last week as well. So, uh, but Innovation and DS not confirmed for the roster at least. And I'm kind of bought in on the Hopium. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, I don't think. I mean, I don't think you think this either, but it's probably not championship caliber yet. It's not Team CC level yet because I don't think he has... Um, he came in so late in the offseason that he couldn't really compete with other teams. Um, and I guess how many players actually wants to go to the Valiant. But this could be like the start of something new. Yeah. Like he could build something here, get some results, restore the reputation of the Valiant. And then if things go well, maybe No Hill could negotiate getting some like proper top tier talent to join the Valiant on a mission to eventually compete with the top teams. They should be in a bad position because they left it so late. But I think that the the failures of their management, I can't remember who was talking about this, but I remember it was either on a podcast or something where so they, they were talking about the Chinese teams have like woke up at the end of the off season and they were like, oh, oh, wait, holy shit, you guys have all been making moves. Was that you, Connor, talking in one of our previous episodes? Yeah, it was me. You were I think a lot analogy. of the Chinese teams got started a little late at times. Yeah. But, um, but that hasn't really hurt them too much because they're looking at talent that no one else is really looking at. You know, the other Western organizations or even the other Korean organizations haven't put the infrastructure down. They haven't laid the groundwork to be able to capitalize on Chinese talent. If, if for example, the game Overwatch 2 pops off and you have a wave of new Chinese talent that pick up the game and start playing it and start getting good... Oh, the Valiant are going to have some of the first dibs. Maybe not the first dibs. Maybe that would be more like your Chengdu's of the world. Or, um, I mean, do people even want to play for the Spark? Maybe. But Valiant is going to be up there with a good coach that has good connections and good scouting. I think, uh, I think they should have completely fucked themselves, but they actually didn't because they're looking at a different selection of talent that other people don't have their eyes on. Yeah. I'm also kind of surprised that we haven't seen a rebranding of Valiant this this year. The Beijing I mean, Bears. Yeah, I feel like this would be Come the perfect on, yeah. year for it because you've essentially you have burnt the bridges with the OG Valiant fan base. It's only the diehards that are still with you, and it is it's pretty clear. Tay Zonday point. shout out. Yeah, I mean, is Tay Zonday is the one who's like he's in the YouTube chat and and he's typing he's still away there. support. Yeah, he's still oh, there yeah, he for the APAC games. He's still there. Yep. Yep. And um, that's what I mean, it's the diehard fans. But at, 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 at what point do you just make the full transition? Because it's pretty clear that the the current group that is managing the Valley and did it because they foresee it as a good investment because of the potential um, fan base in China. And so I don't know how much the the Chinese fan base cares about the geolocation or like of these teams. Like, are they still going to support Valiant? I don't know. I don't know enough information about it. But yeah, I feel like this would have been the best year to do it. Maybe they might still announce it. I mean, there's still a lot of time between now and the Overwatch League next year, so you never know. Um, it could happen. A lot that goes into that as well, though, Brent. That, you know, they have um, exclusive marketing rights to a certain area of the country. That's you true. Know? Like yeah. they, part of what was involved in buying the franchise, reportedly at least. And I don't think they've ever been public about this, but it's you know been reported in ESPN and stuff. Was that you had exclusive rights to hold you know fan events and meetups and stuff like that within. Mm-hmm. Um, your area and i listen if i was the overwatch league and someone had bought into la a shared la slot to me is worth less than the entirety of beijing or something like that where you have a massive developmental market and you're just about to release a new game and does the la valiant really seem like an organization that wants to put more money into their franchise spot i don't think so so if 
if rebranding to a different place required additional payments because the capture area is larger, then that could be, you know, there's, there's so many different yeah. things. That would I feel like, the, into something like this. the power dynamic between the team and the Overwatch League, though, is, I think, firmly on the side of the, the people who are managing the teams. At this point, well, they, should like, have, they should have more punching power. Like, yeah, but like, like, like saying, listen, just, I mean, we'll, we'll take both. I think everyone's hoping at the moment that, um, that the game goes insanely well. You know, yeah. the, the, a lot of the community is coming from a very pessimistic angle towards Overwatch, towards Overwatch and Overwatch League in 2022. But from the owner's point of view, it seems like a lot of them are investing money, speculating that the game might, might actually pop. You know, that the, you might recapture that 2016 hype that Overwatch, holy shit, this IP is really cool and the game is amazing. That, the, the, there seems to be a difference in opinion there, perhaps between different owners, but also between the fan base who has to drudge through the same game every day and the owners who are perhaps thinking a little more about investing for the future. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, I think the Overwatch League would argue we've got a kick-ass game ready to release next year. You're in or... You know, it's our our way or out on the highway. Sure. You know, doing a tier three spot in Valorant. Good luck to you. All right, by <laughs> all accounts, it did sound as well uh, that um, this last year, um, a lot of people were actually really happy with this past year because 2020. I mean, the COVID just like it it ru ruined like every esport, like not only Overwatch but like yeah. CS:GO, League of Legends. All like everyone struggled in 2020 because of COVID. Them shutting down. Um, you know broadcast everyone have to reinvent the wheel and be like how can we broadcast this online but um from what from, from what i heard and what i think has been reported is that like owners um and the one actually browsing the finance documents were actually pretty happy with the awards league in 2021 um the hype generated the viewership um returns stuff like that as well it seemed like Everyone thinks we're in an okay place considering the game and how you know much time has been spent on the Overwatch 2 and developing Overwatch 2 and Overwatch 1 has been kind of like left at the wayside. It does seem like everyone's sort of low-key optimistic um, about potentially rejuvenating the franchise and maybe looking at Overwatch 2 as a you know something to kickstart uh, the hype for the franchise again. So um I, I think it makes a lot of sense in that regard for owners to be um, hype and investing still into the game, trying to see what Overwatch 2 will bring to the franchise. Um, going back to the um, to the branding thing as well, I mean, did it take forever for the Florida Mayhem to just like change colors because it affected so many yes. things when it came to like the in-game skins and you had to yeah. redesign those and re well, the Valiant those. The changed colors three times. That's true. They did go from... From no, green from... and yellow to darker green and yellow. Yeah, and then to blue and yellow. Yeah. I don't know whether they ran it past anyone. I think they just assumed no one would care. <laughs> just did it. <laughs> just did it. Yeah, um, I mean, and, and they're, all... they were good at changing. So. The Overwatch League has relaxed quite a lot over the years as well. Mm. It was an incredibly tight, um, bureaucratic unwavering, ex extremely yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. And I think now it's a bit more chill. And also, Although, wasn't it reported like at the helm. Uh, this offseason as well that Valiant wasn't even sure what they were doing? Like, if they were going to stay with China or if they were going to try to get a Western roster and come mm. back to NA. Wasn't that, I'm, like, I'm reported sure that they, they didn't even know, know what they were going to do? So, I don't actually... I don't remember the report, but I'm sure they didn't know. That yeah. Was, so, yeah. maybe they'll have to figure that out before they mm. rebrand to Beijing Bears. Which everyone wants, by the way. Like, everyone wants the Beijing Bears to be a thing. So Yeah, I feel like it's, it's a make logical it step. I don't know. That's why I brought yes, it up. I really, because... I really want it to be the Beijing Bears, but then it's actually just a really buff guy, or not even buff, just like a big <laughs> burly guy with yep, a beard, beard and his flannel. and his chest open. Oh, yeah, just wearing hair. a bunch of yep. flannel. Yeah, I'm I think sure that would be pull well in China. I I would quite like that. It would pull well with with Overwatch fans. Why? I can tell you that. Why? Because is there a joke I'm missing here? Yes. Oh. There Why is, is this joke. funny? Oh. There is a joke. Just leave it, leave it, leave it. This is so much funnier with him not realizing. <laughs> he doesn't know Green Square. Oh. Actual Green Square oh. moment. 
doesn't know. Type in what? um type in green square. Type in green square. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Don't type in green square. Type in um on on Google uh, Images. Bear man. Bear space man. But turn off safe search. Yeah, turn off safe search when you do it. Turn off safe search. Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I am not going to do this. No. Oh, I, you didn't. Oh, you didn't learn. I, 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 okay. No, I, I, I refrain. Well, moving on. Viewers, if you'd topic. like to, go ahead. But I will not. Moving on to the next topic here. It is a bit more lighthearted. I actually haven't seen a lot of these skins. I managed to stay separate away from them. So this is my first time reacting live. React channel to the new Overwatch Winter Wonderland skins. I saw some people going crazy bat chesting over it but I didn't actually see them myself. So this is the skin review for the Winter Wonderland skins that came out. This got delayed as well, I believe, as well, um, ever so slightly. I saw some people posting about that. Yeah, um, short delay, yeah. yeah. Busy on Overwatch 2. Yeah, yeah. All the artists, they just... Yeah. The skin designers. They were working hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of stuff but I, I feel like the narrative for the longest time was just like the Overwatch skins are sick. And yep. it can't... You, you just... They, they were, you couldn't really, you couldn't really like diverge from the common opinion as well. Like no one would ever go out and be like, "Your work can suck ass," like because they were just genuinely so good. Yep. So it's like that meme of the guy carrying like Atlas, you know, carrying the globe, and it's Sisyphus. Uh, well, uh, Sisyphus. No, was... Atlas is the character. Is, Atlas is does carry the globe. Character. Is, is it yeah. Sisyphus who's pushing up the Sisyphus boulder? The oh, right. That's the boulder. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. not what I mean. I mean, like, Atlas oh. carrying up the globe in terms of, like, and just over it, the meme where you just have the Overwatch art and design department when it comes to just the art and design for Overwatch just really does carry this franchise in, in many ooh, ways. Like, ooh, look at these skins, man. That. They do such a good job every time with the skins because... I think a big part of it is because they didn't go to multiple. Wrecking Ball One is so fucking good. I love the games. Good. That is really cool. I love that. And it's like a snowball as well. Oh man. Yeah, I like it a lot. Oh. I think it's because they 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 get essentially full creative control over the characters. They can change them from top to bottom. It's not individual pieces that they're changing of different yeah. items. It's a whole skin, including weapons and armor sets that they can change. It gives them a lot more freedom to work with and the yeah no no game does it like overwatch the the skins are so sick <laughs> that reindeer the orisa reindeer thing in the video just slays me can we, can, can, could you rewind slays a little bit <laughs> like it looks like some it 80s tv him. show like just look at this thing just i mean we'll we'll see the winston family <laughs> but it just like flies across <laughs> <laughs> it's a, diva it's a, uh, I, I it's a tease it. as to the redesign of Arissa. She can oh, now yeah, just yeah, fly yeah. through the air. Yeah. Oh, that, she can also own. haul other other characters around <laughs> with her. <laughs> We've been asking for that for ages. We've been asking for a rideable Arissa for so long. It'd I think they elite. should make a new hero for Watch Two. Uh, it should be a, a trebuchet hero, but it launches your it launches your, your 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 heroes into the enemy backline. Like tiny, you know? actually, like tiny from Dota. Tiny from Dota does it. Yeah, mm. you can yeah. launch your like that. teammates into. Can you imagine how troll that would be? I would actually, only I play that character. Less, I think that's less relevant though for Overwatch Two. It would be way super relevant in Overwatch One, but mm -hmm. in Overwatch Two, that's that's, that's what I suggested for my character. Do you remember when we did the fan fiction read, Josh, with the Pokemon race that we did? Yeah, so you I, had, I remember it being a fever dream. You, well, I can't remember what your character was called. Oh, that Genji is so good. It was it called is. the Yoka, but that Genji oh, yeah. skin is fantastic. That's nuts. Like, really, really one it of the... Nice. I think that's one of the best they've made, that Genji skin. Well, they, they've got so many good Genji skins. They it's do, got to the yeah. point in Overwatch where... How do you decide which skin to run? Because I I swear to God, I've got like 10 Genji skins that you could just rotate and I'd be fine with it. Yeah. One for every day of the week. One for yeah. every day of the month. I don't love it. the wigs that they put on like Diva a lot of times though. Her skins are pretty good, but I don't like her hairstyles a lot of the time. But everything else, fantastic. This is a good skin. You think and Batista's got some amazing skins as well now that I think about it. Pretty decent, but it really? just looks like a it looks like you've Look you've taken him into the Sims and just changed his clothes rather than <laughs> Anything else? I really like I the casual the style one. ones, though. So fucking good. Do you? 
Yeah, yeah I, quite, I don't know. I, the I like these kind of like. ones where they redesign the kind of thing to the make the Wrecking it look Ball one. I think is the best different. skin out of all of them. I think it's yeah. like, I think I think that's this is the best skin. It's the so Carrot knows this. This it's, well, it's just a really snowman. He's also dressed just the Santa Claus. Yeah, he's I mean, dressed look at him. Santa. I mean, look at him. <laughs> it's so don't good. do that at home. <laughs> Don't do that at yeah, all. Don't don't buy. The how cables. is he? By the way, how is that wired so that he can bite through the cable and it turns the lights on? Was he biting through a resistor? What what what's the situation that's, there? That that, yeah, well, that wouldn't make any circuit. sense then because that would still be like the it would circuit. still be connected. Maybe it was. It would, like, yeah. Oh no, it's a different cable. Oh, it's a different cable. Oh, it's a different oh. cable. Yeah, Sorry. It's just, so maybe he's... so maybe that one had the, those. Because of the lights, those were all resistors. Also, and just the, the cable was just a short. That it was incredibly short. dangerous. Like he, he's an intelligent yeah. hamster that escaped off the moon. Why is he biting into a live cable? Well, he's not. The red one would be the live cable, right? And the other one's not carrying charge. Oh, the other one's the other one is just the LEDs. Just like, he's he's just biting through the LEDs, and then he shoves a battery on. Don't, don't bite black cables. They're, that attention don't. to detail, very cool. Don't because, bite cables, no matter what the color. Yeah, because I I would have oh, gone around whatever. just biting cables, thinking they were safe. We were doing yeah. a TF2 charity event one time. We <laughs> we had some Overwatch there as well, and we had the scout from TF2, the voice actor, came on and thought it'd be funny to do a bit where he was talking about children chewing through Ethernet cables, and he was he was encouraging people to chew through their Ethernet cables, <laughs> oh. and we we felt like we were legally obligated to tell people that that was a bad idea. So we just spent half the thing saying, "Wait, well, don't actually chew through your Ethernet cables." <laughs> that exists somewhere online. <laughs> Okay. So well, the, the last one, I actually really like the brig skin. The brig skin just gets me going. I didn't get a chance to look at it too well. It's uh, the week three reward. Um, mm -hmm. It was in the video, like in the back. Um, it's showcased on the uh, the website as well, but they don't seem to have pushed a Twitter video. I mean, that has me that has me frustrated. It was yeah, my favorite one. Straight. Well, it was like a peppermint brigitte. So it looks skins. like a a cookie. You know, mm. I don't know. Oh, I, 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 I really like that one. But Kurt's we... pulling it up. Okay. We're getting it. Kurt's Any minute now. Well, it, you know, I don't, I don't think you guys would be too pleased with it because it was just a reskin. It was just new oh. Sims clothes. Well, it was, there was no redefining yeah. of features. You know? It doesn't get my blood pumping, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What about the, what about the, uh, the reindeer Orisa? Does that get your blood pumping? The reindeer Orisa? Um, yeah. uh, it's not bad. I think it's myself. okay. It's okay. They made her it's... an animal. That's cool. Yeah, but she's already an animal. She's a battle cow slash horse slash with goat eyes. I don't really know what she is, but she's animal-esque. Should they make her like a proper horse skin? Like this, that is, that is, oh my goodness. Does she drop doesn't down make the presents? Play a that that is supercharger. amazing. Does she drop down presents? Oh, they don't show it. Okay, well. I can't help but think she just looks like one of the VIPs from Squid Game, and she's going <laughs> to tell me how much that young boy looks lovely and drag him off into a room somewhere. I, I didn't watch Squid Game. I not watch Squid Game. Whoa, well, whoa, whoa, go back, go back to the weapon. What was the, did you see that? This, the attention to detail. It's like the, one of those things you shake, and like the snow. Yeah, the Look snow at that. Globe. Yeah. Oh my god, oh, in the yeah, gun? Yeah. That's, That's cool. crazy. Yeah, that's they, this is the best skin of them all. I'm they do you. good skins. That is yeah. nuts. Overwatch that is does amazing. You get Chad or Risa skin right there. I'm ready to move I'm, on. I'm, I'm ready to go play Orisa yeah, right now. I'm you, some Johnny can go play Orisa, and I'm going to move yep. on to the next topic, which is the most important topic of every week. And this time I've regained control of it. This is a genuine Bren player of the week. Every other player of the week, whenever I'm not on the episodes, Josh always says, oh, yeah, I made sure to ask Bren. I made sure to ask Bren. His, this player is confirmed. No, he doesn't ask me. He never asks me. I come down sometimes and I'm making breakfast in the kitchen or whatever and they're recording this Platchat Overwatch episode and I look over and it's like, Simon Brent's play of the week and this week I'm giving it to and this week it's going to da 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 and I'm like, <laughs> you didn't ask me this. You literally didn't, you didn't tell me shit. So this week I've regained control and it's going to somebody very, very worthy. And Kurt, I don't know if, he's, I don't know if these guys watching can hear it, but I'd like you to play the video of, of the player of the week for this week. What is going on? Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh my god. It's a fucking TikTok. The TikTok in VLC. Leute, meine Mama hat mir einfach erlaubt, dass ich Corona trinken darf. Wie cool ist das bitte? Jetzt zocke ich Fortnite und trinke Cola. Yippie! What? Is that a 
small German boy excited to play Fortnite and drink Coca Cola. My mother, my mother let me buy cola. So I'm like paraphrasing because I don't know German. But like, my mother let me buy cola. How cool is this? I get to play Fortnite and drink cola. Young and naive. And I wanted yeah, to make I wanted to make this small German child my player of the week because one day I hope to feel the same joy that they do. I actually I think I might know who that is. I think that's Thomas Schlausner who sent us that Cloud Nine clip at the Possibly. beginning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You've absolutely yeah. slayed this dude. I, <laughs> no, I think that's who it is. I think Thomas Schlausner got on his Xbox and he was sat there playing Fortnite with his Coca Cola and he got halfway through and he was like, "Oh, I'll play some Overwatch with the friends." And he C nine and so he sent me a Twitter DM. Yep. Did he did he finalize it with Yippee? Yippee. Yeah, the tweet? Yippee no. The anyway, that 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 video gives me a lot of joy and I wanted to share it with the world as well. And I hope that, that I hope that kid is enjoying life right now. Yeah. Just living it up. He doesn't even realize he's in the best years of his life as well. You know, yeah, stress free. Yeah. His mum let him buy a Coca Cola. He's gonna be drinking it, playing some Fortnite. Yippee! What a good and life. then the world's gonna come at him fast, and then he'll yeah. be on an yeah. Overwatch podcast. <laughs> and then he'll be an Overwatch like content creator. Off season. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bitter at the world, lashing out at his friends <laughs> around him. <laughs> We've lost, God, the We've lost the plot. Bleak. Have We've a lovely Christmas, everybody. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we won't see you before Christmas. Have Good a nice point. Christmas. Have a lovely, happy holidays. If you don't celebrate Christmas, happy holidays. If you do, then, you know, happy Christmas and whatnot. Spend some time with the family and everything else. Hope you all have a, a lovely time. That's Plat Chat episode uh, 117. Plat Chat Overwatch. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube. You can see the little link down there. Um, do, 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 do. I don't really know how to end this, to be honest. I mean, um... Yes. Yes. But yeah, I mean, no, we can just end it, I think. See ya. Okay. Bye. Yeah, let's end it. Bye, everybody.